Welcome, welcome, welcome to this online virtual worship experience. My name is Johnny Simpson. I'm one of the pastors here at Faith United Methodist Church, and we are so glad to have you here in our online worship service. If this is your first time watching us online, I need your help. We would love to connect with you after the worship experience. If you could just text the word CONNECT to 281 281- Three three six one six nine eight. Again, that is the word connect. If you could text it to 281-336-1698. Now, if it's your first time or your 100th time, we still need your help as well. We need you to click the like button, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. We need you to leave a comment. We need you to share the video. That way, more people can learn about Jesus Christ and the pardoning of their sins. The more people that are active on the page that click like, that uh, press share, that subscribe to the YouTube channel, that follow the Facebook page, the more people that do it, the more more people that uh, are that are around get to see it as well. It really helps the Facebook page and the YouTube channel grow. It costs you nothing and it's very easy to do. And you are one second away from being able to worship with your friends and family all over the country, no matter where they are. We have a wonderful worship experience in store for you. We are going to recite our affirmation of faith, sing the glory of poetry, and then be uh, led in worship in music. God bless you and thank you for joining us online. Now we will affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and ascended at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the
Let us go before the Lord in prayer. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and there is none like you, Lord God. We say thank you for getting us up this morning and starting us on our way and putting food on our tables and clothes on our backs, Lord God. We thank you for the opportunity to just gather in your presence and worship you, Lord God. If you never do anything else for us, you've already done more than enough. You are the king of ages. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the one who was and is and is to come and there is none like you, Lord God. Lord God, we bring our, our humble petitions before you to provide us in areas we lack, to heal us in areas where we are sick, to give us peace in areas that we are stressed. And we are quick to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory that is due your name, Lord God. Lord God, there have been some times where we have missed the mark where we have not done what we were supposed to do, where we have done things we were not supposed to do, Lord God. We ask for your help, your forgiveness, your grace and mercy. And in the same manner that we ask for forgiveness for where we have missed the mark, help us to remember those that we need to forgive so that we can be quick to forgive them as well in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to not yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For you are the king of glory. You are the Lord strong and mighty. You are the Lord mighty in battle. You are the one that was and is and is to come. You're the wheel in the middle of the wheel. You're the rose of Sharon. You're the bishop of souls. You are the, the one who we call father. And it is in your son's precious, perfect, powerful name that we submit this prayer. The name above all names. The name Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, people of faith. You are watching Faith TV and I'm your host, Delana Gilmore. Thank you for joining us this Sunday for this worship experience online. Remember, if you miss the service live, you can like Faith UMC's Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or check the church website for all the archive services. And now for some faith news and notes. Happy birthday to all of our members born in the month of October. May God continue to bless and keep you. Happy birthday. Do we have your correct contact information? Email DickinsonFaithUMC at gmail.com so we can keep in touch. Members can join our text messaging system by texting the word MEMBER to 281-336-1698. That way we can reach you in case of emergencies. Submit your prayer request to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash prayer. All requests are confidential unless you would like them placed on the prayer list. Sunday school is on Sundays at 10 a.m. in the Winfield Warren Room. Bible study is on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Zoom. The Zoom meeting ID is 853-2885. 3803. The passcode is Bible study. And finally, church council is Monday, October the 4th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. The meeting ID is 834-1563-9072. The passcode is Faith UMC. Well, church family, as always, there's a lot going on at Faith. Be sure to check the website and follow us on social media. That's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your worship experience. Let the 
church say amen let the church say time for the offering. I want to take this opportunity to, first of all, thank you for continuing to give during this time. This is how the work of the kingdom still gets done. There are multiple ways to give. You can still send a check in the mail to 2205 Avenue G, Dickinson, Texas, 77539. You can still come by and drop off your offering on certain days when we are here. We also have online giving. If you go to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash donate, Nate, you can see the ways that we will be able to receive your seed online. We also have PayPal. Dickinson Faith UMC at gmail.com is the PayPal email address. We also are able to take giving through the app Givelify. If you search for Faith UMC Dickinson in the app of Givelify, you will be able to find us and you'll see a picture of the church right on there and you'll be able to give. We thank you for continuing to sow a seed into God's kingdom. Amen. We ask a blessing upon the gifts and the givers. We ask a blessing over those who are able to give and those who are not able to give. And we ask that this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, faith family and friends. Our text today will be coming from the Old Testament, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. And I will be reading to you from the New King James Version. And the word of God reads, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left hand that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most gracious and merciful Father, we thank you for allowing us to come back into the sanctuary of praise and worship just one more time. We want to thank you for allowing us to come and spend some time with you in your word. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable because you are our strength. You are our redeemer. And anything that is none like you, we ask that you remove it in the name of Jesus because we want you to get all the honor and the glory you so rightfully deserve. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask these things. And the church of God said, amen. Today's message is entitled, Be Strong and Courageous. Church family and friends, we ought to be glad today, for we know that God will take care of you. The written word of God says, do not be afraid nor be dismayed for God is with us wherever you go. We are to be strong and courageous, not sometimes, but in season and out of season, sunshine or rain, in our joy and in our pain, God cares and God is near. For we stand on the promises of God if we submit to his way and to his will. He is with us. God wants us to give ourselves freely. He wants us to be connected and be glad about belonging to him as his disciple. With a willing heart and spirit, to serve the kingdom, to serve the church and his people. The people called by his name are to give God the three T's, your time, your talent, and tithe, which is a privilege to serve the author and finisher of our faith in reverence and in obedience. Faith, our church has a calling to do ministry and God will guide us and God will prepare us. We must come together in unity, work and give something worthy and fruitful back to God because he calls us to be faithful and fruitful. 
In times like these, we must be strong and courageous. We have to keep a praise on our lips and be willing to tell someone about the wonderful God we serve, who looks at the heart and transform the mind and gives gifts that money cannot buy and human hands cannot prepare. These gifts are unconditional love, knowledge, wisdom, and salvation. The membership into the family of God is through the local church. Your time, your talent, your presence and your financial support, yes, your time, because we are all in for our God. We are a family, a community of faith. Remember, local churches serve the local community. The needs of the people are high, and we are to share the love of Jesus Christ to change the hearts of everyday people so that they can see and witness the promised land. In today's text from the book of Joshua, Moses, a faithful servant, has finished his course of getting his people freed from the rule of Pharaoh's bondage, suffering, and oppression. And he led the Israelites to the edge of the promised land. This journey took 40 years and God was with them. And he fed them heavily manna every day. And he led them. Moses knew he would not go into the promised land with them. But he prepared the people for this journey by leaving the people with a very bright light and a strong fire to equip them for the life ahead of them, as stated in the book of Deuteronomy. Now Moses is dead. As Christians, we know that God's plan always moves forward and transitions as needed to carry forth his divine plan. There is always a ram in the bush, and the ram called at this time was a faithful and humble servant who worked closely with Moses in ministry, assisted him, was by his side, and knew God wanted him to lead his people into the promised land. This servant was faithful over a few things, and after Moses' death was given a larger responsibility that required him to keep God's word. And he, the servant, depended even more on God's presence with him. His name was Joshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. God is salvation. God prepares Joshua for his commission. God prepares Joshua for his charge, which is to lead the Israelites into the promised land. There are times in this life that you will have to be strong and courageous. God is still preparing his faithful servants even today for what we are living through right now. Today calls for us to be strong and courageous. The things that we are going through today, you have to be, you have to stand firm on the word that God has given us. This is why we have to study so we know that he will be there for us. He will lead us because we're going through an awful lot of things right now. And it'll be interesting to see what we are truly living through once the history books are written for 2021. For what we are living through, we must be strong and courageous. The church in general is being challenged 
Our church is being challenged now. Now we have church with a virtual as well as in-person worship. The church needs its people in order to function so that we can do what God has called us to do. The mission field of the church has increased because the needs of the people have increased and the services and the ministries of the church still need to go forward. The church needs every set of helping hands to do their share to ensure that the church moves forward. It is a sacred place and a refuge for those who are in need of hope, peace, and unconditional love. God will give us what we need and prepare us for this journey to the promised land of abundant living with the presence of God. You see, the land of Canaan, the promised land, this land was a vast territory, but the first challenge was how to enter the land because they had to cross the River Jordan. This was a time of preparation, the focus on keeping the faith and the fulfillment of God's promise, delivering them into the land of milk and honey. Even though they were challenged, they had to be faithful and depend on God to see them through. Just like we have to depend on God to see us through. God encourages and ensures Joshua that he will be with him just like he was with Moses. Joshua must give this call everything he has, his heart, his mind, his soul. By doing this, God gives Joshua the assurance that the presence of God will be with him in the great work to which he is called to do. This should reassure us that if we too are obedient and we too follow his commands, that God will be with us and he will see us through anything. He will give us the strength to go up the rough side of the mountain and we will not be disappointed, especially if we do it in love and in unity and obedience. God does not call the qualified, but he does qualify the call. If he has called you to do something, he's going to prepare you. He's going to guide you. He's going to communicate to you through the movement of the Holy Spirit what you should do. The Lord thy God is with thee as a as a God of power and might. So wherever Joshua goes, God goes with all power. God said that he would not fail nor forsaken thee. The presence of God will never leave thee. This is another reassurance that if he is with us, he's going to give us the strength to fight. He's going to give us the strength to be innovative. He's going to give us the strength to do what is necessary so that his plan, his mission will go forth. And he said that if we do it this way, we will have success. For Joshua had victory over his enemies as long as Joshua and the children of God keep the faith and be obedient to the most high God, the sovereign God, who has the authority, who has the power to overcome anything in or of this world. Chapter one in the book of Joshua inspires us to always keep in the forefront of our minds that God is with us in every situation. God is with us in every circumstance. God is with us in every condition. 
God is with us whether we acknowledge him or not. Once we have claimed him as our Lord and Savior, he is with us because his covenant with us is true. It's for keeps. It's for always. Because God does not respond as we humans respond to each other, saying yes when we're together and then saying no when we are not. God means what he says and says what he means. He tells us. He shows us. He encourages us. It is up to us how we choose to respond. Faith family, God wants us to move into our promised land through our worship, through our giving, through our ministries, through our studying of his word, through anything that we do for his glory, which begins with how we treat one another how we talk to one another, how we serve others. When the church has a need, we are to respond. First, we must be strong and courageous in all that we do and say. God wants every disciple called by his name, time, talent, and tithe. The irony in this is that he is the one who gives us the gift of time, the talents we possess, and the financial provision he provides to us through the jobs and careers we hold. Everything belongs to him. I'll say that again. Everything belongs to him. Yet all he asks is that out of everything that he blesses us with, if we would just give a small portion, just a small portion back to him so that others can experience the wonders of his love and the mystery, how he's able to forgive us how he is able to build us up and teach us, how he is able to protect us, how he's able to give us the thoughts to even do a certain service for the people who are in need. We must be strong and we must be courageous. Regardless of any circumstance, trial, or tribulation we are confronted with, always remembering that we are a people who walk by faith and not by sight. Remembering we are a people whose trust is in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. Remembering that we are a people of faith and if we keep and follow the laws of God in obedience, all things are possible. Scripture declares we cannot turn right or turn left. We must keep our eyes focused on the ruler of our faith. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who is our confidant. We must follow the book of laws, the Holy Bible. We must meditate on the word of God day and night, which means we must have knowledge of our faith. We must know our story. We must know our history, that we are a people who suffer and overcome. We suffer and overcome, moving from faith to faith. We don't stay the same. We grow with grace, his amazing grace, and the mercies that he get, gives us each and every day when we fall short. But we get back up and we keep moving forward. We are to 
be encouraged and strong. Knowing God would do what he said he would do. It may not happen when we want it to happen, but it will happen when God says it will happen. Our time is not God's time. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. We must remember that the word of God is in us and covers us. We have the authority through the power of God to have victory over anything as long as we are within the will of God. Faith, family, and friends, we must learn and know the word of God, live the word of God, and speak the word of God over our, our lives and each other. Not sometimes, but all the time. We must never, ever, ever give up and never, ever, ever give in because God has a plan and he has called his people to execute his plan on his behalf for his glory. So don't be dismayed. Don't think defeat. Don't think lack. Don't think we can't. Don't think we don't have enough people. God can take our little, bless it, and make it more. We must be strong and we must be courageous because God will take care of you. God will take care of us. We must think like Joshua thought as he was commissioned. He was charged to lead the Israelites into the promised land, the land of Canaan. We may not know what is ahead of us, but we know that we know that God is with us. God is for us. God will do a work, a good work through us. God has promised us and God has delivered us before. Therefore, he will deliver us again. He did it for Abraham. He did it for Moses. He did it for Joshua and he'll do it for faith. He'll do it for you and he will do it for me. Remember to be strong and courageous for God is with us. For we are on a journey to the promised land. So we must be strong and courageous. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for the word that has come forth. We thank you for your promise to us that you will prepare us, you will guide us, and we will be in your presence. We will be fruitful and successful the way that you would have us to be successful. Through having unconditional love, peace, joy, and hope. Help us to be strong and courageous. We ask it all through the matchless name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior and the church of God said, amen. The doors of the church are open and they've been open for over 2000 years. This is an opportunity to connect and respond to the preached word. The doors of the church are open for those who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This is an opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the pardoning of your sins. So if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins, this is an opportunity to connect. If you do know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins and are looking for a new church home, I can recommend one for you here at Faith UMC in Dickinson, Texas. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and want to get to know him, but don't necessarily think faith will be a good fit, I am okay with that. Once we get you on the right path of salvation and knowing Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, I will write a letter to whatever Bible-based church you decide to join, keyword being Bible-based. There are a bunch of ways for you to connect if that 
has touched you in some way. You can text CONNECT to 281-336-1698. Again, that is 281-336-1698. You can call us at 281-337-6036. Again, you can call us at 281-337-6036. You can email us at DickinsonFaithUMC at gmail.com and you can inbox our Facebook page. We would love to connect with you and develop a relationship and get you uh, closer to us as a church family. Now, may we live out the word that we have heard. Receive all that we have prayed for and be blessed so that we can bless others. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.